This is the trending 10. Tom's sick. Ryan's on vacation. Russ isn't allowed over. And I finally get to talk about books that aren't Wolverine 1 and New Mutants 98. Comic fam, I've been in quarantine. Fortunately, San Diego Comic Con's next week, and I'm going to be able to go with full immunity. Oh. Hit the like, slap the subscribe button, because I seldomly say this. Stay tuned to the end of the video, because there is a book that I think that not only you need to read, you need to spec on and buy. You heard it here first, number 10 on the list. We have 24, the comic book. <laughs> this is not that book. We have, remember a show that was out back in the early 2000s, Gem? I never watched it. I'm hoping you've seen this show. I've never gotten into 24. I mean, I've watched the first 48, but yeah, 24 was never a show that was on my watch list. Back in 2001, when this came out, it ran for nine seasons. It ended in 2014, and all of a sudden, we have an 800% increase in copies sold because they're making a movie about it now? Yeah, it's just like a $5 book, a prestige format, 48-page size comic book, and 800% sounds like a lot, but it went from like zero to one sales to like 10, nine sales. But I'm seeing this book pop up on Instagram all over. There are a few, I'll give him that, fans of 24 still. But is it too late? Yeah, we're talking 10 years later. And the show had a gimmick. There were 24 episodes in a season and each episode was one hour in real time. So you watch the whole season, you get a full day. So what's the gimmick going to be for the movie? Is it going to be like one hour is a whole day and it's a two and a half day long movie? And what's next? Lost the movie? Grey's Anatomy the movie, where you at? Or maybe we see a few lorries available for House MD the movie. Regardless of what we may think, I want to know your thoughts in the comment section below because this is in early development as of this week by 20th Century Studios. Do yourself a solid and download key collector comics. You support the show, but you unlock a free two-week subscription if you use code TOM101. And you're going to want to have that handy during San Diego Comic-Con because Hall H is making its triumphant return. That's right. We have not seen the amount of spikes in comic books over the last couple of years because we have been missing out on this annual event where the big dogs get together and release the big information that starts to move comic books, and you're probably going to be sitting on some, and they're going to be spiking, and you need to know. Download Key Collector Comics, and let's talk about She-Hulk. Red She-Hulk, that is. Number nine on the list, we have Hulk 16. And think about it. We've got Hulk. We've got She-Hulk. Now we've got Red Hulk. Maybe we can get Red She-Hulk in the future. $30 average sales, $160 CGC 9.8. That recently happened. This book hit heights of 250 back in 2021. It's down 100 bucks, but wait, why would someone purchase a 9.8 newsstand and set a record this week if it wasn't because of an optimistic view of what could be happening in the MCU in regards to what Jem just said? Red She-Hulk, a newsstand 9.8 last sold in 2021 at its height again for $798. Increase of 25% selling for $1,000 this week. I can see the percentage increase, only $30 on average, but somebody went out of their way to break a record that was set during the comic boom. They must have a lot of confidence in this book. And I love the next book at the list at number eight. We have Uncanny X-Men issue number 158 from 1982, seeing $25 average sales, $250 for a CGC 9.8. This is the second appearance of Rogue. Kind of. We've talked about her first appearance in Avengers Annual 10 multiple times over on the Hot 10, and we both kind of agree that it's a super ugly cover, especially for a Rogue or X-Men key issue. But this is the first appearance in title in Uncanny X-Men, but she also shares her first cover appearance with another issue. That's right. The second appearance is actually tied. There are two you can shop, and my opinion, both covers are better than Avengers Annual 10, but I don't know which I like more. Because, yes, we have Uncanny 158, but we also have ROM 31. And I was a total ROM noob. Like, I knew that there was a diehard cult following for it, and I finally read the first omnibus, and I get it. The story is great, the art is amazing, and I dig this ROM 31 cover. Rom was so good that after the first arc, he got incorporated into the greater 616, which is why we see the X-Men in the Rom title so late in this series. And based off of solicitations, and this information's on Key Collector Comics, by the way, so I got to download that app, it says that there are multiple solicitations that state that 
Both of these books debuted on March 9th, the same day on the same month, marking both of these as a tie for the second appearance of Rogue. And there are also two reasons why I think this book is on the list. She definitely stole the show in X-Men 97. Her first appearance has been super popular, and now her first cover appearance, well, one of them, has a 144% increase in copies sold. But also, Marvel Legends is coming out with a new rogue action figure with her OG costume. That's right, the design, the short hair, and it's making people probably want to buy the comic book to put alongside of their brand new toy. Number seven on the list, Star Wars The Return of Tag and Bink number two, from 2006. Let's piss off a bunch of Star Wars fans, Jem, because I do not know Star Wars well. I'm probably going to say a lot of things wrong during this number, but I digress because this is one of the few times that I actually knew a little bit about what's going on with this book. We are seeing $40 average sales, $300 for a CGC 9.8. And do you recall in the prequels when Palpatine is talking to Anakin and convincing him to join the dark side? Why? I'm not the biggest Star Wars guy either, but I do remember this scene basically talking Anakin into joining the dark side so he can resurrect Padme. This is the first cameo appearance of Darth Plagueis, and he was the one that was mentioned during this conversation that was able to do so. Did this Sith Lord even exist? Was Palpatine lying? This was kind of just something in lore, never to be seen in the prequels or the other movies. Well, as of the season finale of The Acolyte, we get a cameo. This Sith exists. Yeah, say what you will about the Acolyte. I think that's pretty cool how they took that little nugget and actually brought it to life for us. We're seeing a 300% increase in copies sold this week over last. However, I'm not too sure on the fate of the Acolyte. Is there going to be a season two? Will we see more of this character? That's yet to be known. Join the mystery mail call. One per box is a Kale New Wolverine number one homage to the classic first ongoing series of Wolverine. The second mystery book will be announced Sunday of San Diego Comic-Con, and it is indeed a San Diego Comic-Con variant. Hit ComicTom101.com to join the community. Support the show directly. I'll send you comic books every single month. Which brings us to number six on the list. We've got some Spidey goodness with ASM 600. It's the first appearance of Captain Yuri Watanabe, who later becomes Wraith. Now, we've seen her recently in the Spider-Man 2 video game, but that's not why she made the list this week. You can buy this book for like five bucks. That's cover price. But we're seeing an increase of copies sold of 433% because we're getting Spider-Man Noir rumors. And not just one. We're getting multiple rumors about this very different Spidey tale that we're going to get on Amazon, led by Nicolas Cage. Rumor has it that this version of Spider-Man will not be Peter Parker, but an alternate version of Ben Riley. We're also hearing that the villain will be the crime boss Silvermane and that the plot will feature the cop turned vigilante Yuri Watanabe. Brendan Gleeson, you know him from Harry Potter, has joined the cast to an undisclosed role. And the only thing we know for sure besides that is that they are including the name Spider in title, but not Spider-Man. I'll take it because they weren't going to include Spider at all at one point. Yeah, you got to have Spider in the title. And I think Spider Noir has a nice ring to it. Halfway through the list, at number five, we got Incredible Hulk 256, the first appearance of Sabra. $30 average sales, $200 for a CGC 9.8. We saw her in trailer. It hiked this book up. An increase of copy sold of 825%. And news that they've changed her background to include the Black Widow Ops program. Sounds like she's going to be a Black Widow, unlike the comic, because this movie took so damn long to come out that in this current climate, could be considered a little insensitive for the masses to enjoy, and that tells you a lot. Am I saying this politically correct, Jim? Yeah, sounds good to me. We actually talked about this book two years ago when it made number one on the Hot 10 list, and the character in the comics is an Israeli mutant that works for the Secret Service. They're keeping her heritage the same, but they're making her part of the Black Widow program instead. This book was going for like 900 bucks strong at the end of 2022, and then it creeped up to over $1,000 January 2023, a delay as lengthy as this shows the impact it can have on a collectible and the overall optimism of the spec, and then the uncertainty of the character even being incorporated on the screen in a way that would appease fans drove it down $800. So it makes sense why this book is on the climb. It's because it went down in the ditch. Yeah, and the casting was controversial to begin with, and then the world has changed since then. So it's just been a whole bunch of craziness surrounding this character ever since the jump. 
Number four on the list is Hulk number four, and you're going to want to get this book because it's a dope display because there's two different versions of the cover. One Green Hulk, one Red Hulk. This is the first time that they fight in comic books, and you can get them for $9 a piece. You can get nine eights for like 80 to 125 bucks, and you can put them up together, and it's dope for every PC. It's basically the same thing as Red She-Hulk. We've got Green Hulk in the MCU. Now we've got Red Hulk. Maybe one day they'll fight, and for whatever reason, that'll make these comic books more valuable, but... Mark Ruffalo has stated that he will not be appearing in Captain America Brave New World, or he could be lying. Oh, let's talk about actors lying with number three on the list with Prelude to Deadpool Core number three, the first appearance of Dogpool. $20 average sales, $200 for a CGC 9.8, an increase of copies sold of 275%. Because we know Dogpool is in the movie. We've seen her in the trailer. But we're now seeing her on the red carpet, stealing everyone's hearts. And this could be a recipe for the next fan favorite animal in the MCU, the next Rocket Raccoon. I mean, Dogpool has her own Instagram page with over 174,000 followers. She's been a big part of the marketing and promotion besides being in the trailer. So, yeah, I can see it. Everybody loves dogs. I really like this spec. I think people have underestimated the impact that this character could have. Because when we chatted about this book eight months ago, there's been an increase on the census count. And, Jem, we talk about this all the time. Every week, there are hundreds of books being added to the census on all the key books that everyone's buying, and it's making an incredibly volatile situation for key comic books. In that short eight months, there's been an increase of 24 slabs on the census, and to this day, there are only 13 copies graded at a 9.8. This book is out there. It needs to be hunted for. It needs to be graded, and I bet you're going to have a great margin. Yeah, there's only 33 slabs on the census in total, which means people are not grading this. Check your long box, see if it has any spine ticks, and see if you have any 9.8 candidates. Number two on the list, we've got Hulk issue two. This is the first appearance of Red Hulk in story. Although he's on the cover of issue one and it's labeled the first appearance, He's actually not in the issue at all. It's like I planned it, Jim. I just said on the Hot 10 this week that there was a conversation to be had another day, and who knew that it would be a short 48 hours? Issue number one of the Hulk does feature Red Hulk on cover only, not on the interior. Issue number two, you get him on the cover, but he is in the interior. So... This is a question to collectors. Which is the real key? The obvious answer is you got to get both. Of course, we were going to see Red Hulk on the list after that trailer and seeing Red Hulk at the very end, plus the promotional material with Red Hulk holding Cap Shield. There's a 950% increase in copies sold this week over last, $25 averages and $146 CGC 9.8. Issue one at a 9.8 is going for like 300 to 375 right now. And you can get issue number two for about 150, which is the more significant key appearance. Let me know in the comment section below. I want to hear from the collectors because there's a lot of people who would probably disagree both ways. And I want to know what your thoughts are. And the number one book on the list today, I think you should buy right now. You should spec. You should buy to read it. And you should hunt for a 9.8 or go hunting and get it graded yourself. Could be huge. Hit the like, slap the subscribe button. And Jam, why don't you do the honors? You're the guest today. An amazing book. It's Barbaric, issue number one from Vault Comics. This originally came out as a three-issue series, and then they had a secondary three-issue series. You've got Owen the Barbarian. You've got Axe, his bloodthirsty Axe, who literally gets drunk off the blood of his enemies. Such a great read, and I'm so happy to see that they're making a show out of this. Jem, I have the entire Conan Omni Collection and Savage Sword Omni Collection because of you. Conan the Barbarian is fantastic, and this is like a modern shakeup of a classic tale. We have a barbarian who is cursed to do good. Yeah, it's kind of like Conan, but if Conan was mixed with Berserker. Issue one is one of the strongest starts to a comic series that I've read in a long time. It's hysterical. It's violent. It's gory. It has nudity. And it's being adapted, and the lineup is incredible. Yeah, Netflix is set to adapt this into a series. You have Sam Clayfin from Peaky Blinders playing Owen, and you have Patrick Stewart playing the voice of Axe. This hungry, bloodthirsty, magical Axe speaks in the comic book, but one of the only people that can hear it is Owen the Barbarian. And this is going to be portrayed by Patrick Stewart. This is crazy. And it's going to be directed by Michael Bay. And that's why we're seeing a 3,633% increase in copies sold. If you don't buy this book to slab it or to spec on it, buy the graphic novel and read Barbaric.
You need to pick up volume one. You need to read all of it. You're going to want to read issue two immediately after finishing issue number one. It is one of the most fun times I've had reading a comic in a long time. And if you read this, I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section below. I appreciate the community and your time today, Jem, as always. Hey, no problem, Tom. Hope you feel better soon. You guys geek responsibly and stay minty fresh. Enough said.